Let's take a slow victory lap for every piece of loot around here, and then Mori's gonna be seeing a visit for me. Because I am hurt. <laughs> You know what? Let's try to get to the end first. There's gonna be another fight up here, but it's probably not a boss, I don't think. And I might as well heal right before the boss. The actual boss. Hello. Whew! Alright, so that, that was probably the toughest uh, encounter in the game so far. Actually, yeah, it's, that was harder than any... I was gonna say toughest mini-boss so far, but it's the toughest boss so far. Because none of the bosses have made me take multiple attempts, really. I think I think story bosses have taken two and uh, two attempts at most. So that three barbarians was actually the toughest thing so far. And yeah, it's it's chaos. They have strong melee attacks. They have flurry attacks. It's multiple targets at once to keep track of, and they summon a huge mob of ads, which admittedly were helpful because they would give me the ability to get a bunch of phosons for my final for my finisher. But they were also chaotic, and a lot of them caused my deaths because they could attack me. So there was just so many sources of attack. And at the same time, surprisingly, one of the, what turned out to be the most lethal thing of the fight was the fact that the barbarians themselves would use uh, potions, and their attack potions were ruinous to me. Ow! You guys are hardier than the ones that the guy was summoning, that's for sure. Crit time! It's no use! Take this! It's no use! Take this! It's no use! Take this! Sorry. Anima flashbacks. That garbage game. Garbage game. People get mad when I call it a garbage game, but it's a bad game. By all metrics possible. Except for people that are really easily amused, very easily impressed, or way too forgiving of things because it's indie, bro! I hate that. I love indie games, but I hate people that... I hate the idea of giving free games a free pass for being indie. That frustrates me, because the concepts of what makes a game good or bad still exist, no matter what, no matter the budget. Hello, secret skill. What do you do, secret skill? Air raid. Are you cool? Move about the air while swinging the chain. Interesting. So it's definitely a mobility-based skill, which could be kind of neat, but ultimately I'm not sure if I'm super into it. Let's level up. Let's go ahead and level up round flare. There we go. And then down here, increase damage dealt by potions. We're almost maxed out. So the last ones are slightly recover PP when you guard, and. Reinforcement, enhanced effects of equipment. That's nine. So nine. All right, so I have nine and five. It's 14. I have 13 left to get. So you must max out at approximately level 60 or something. At least you stop getting things you can buy for that particular tree. I think leveling up also increases your stats. I hope. I've kind of assumed that the entire playthrough. <laughs> It probably affects stuff like health or something to some extent, or your stats. I don't know. Maybe stats are entirely equipment-based. Alright. This next chamber will be right before the boss fight, so it'll give me a, a teleport back to the uh, last rest spot. And I can also conveniently teleport back when I'm done. I'm back, bastards. You thought you were rid of me, but you ain't. You ain't rid of me at all. I have a grape stem. Alright, we never used the Ancient Crystal. I don't really expect the final boss themselves to be that tough, so let's put something else back on. Yeah, the Sun Pendant, I think. Gourmet Ring, uh... Put you away, put the crystal away. I'll, use the cr I'll save the crystal for, like, the ending of the game, I think. Draw nearby enemies. Seems slightly dangerous in the, it, with the, how she's not the hardiest character ever. Should I buy anything? Did I, do I have money? Oh yeah, I do. Whoa, I'm not. I'm not the enemy. Whoa. 
We could buy a ton of these. Not that many, actually. We can only buy six of these, which is not a ton. Uh, that's every pair of those become decent healing potions that you can stack up a bit. So it's not an insane idea. I'm pretty high level at this point. Then maybe it... I'm not sure if I should prioritize things I can buy with food. Yeah, the cocoa and shrimp have become kind of low-level level-up items at this point. And the root seed and barometer seed require phosons I don't really have right now. Meanwhile, if I, fu if I buy six healing tonics, I can actually mix those into being three tonics that are actually worth a decent chunk. At, at being a, worth at least half my health. See, I ran out of garbage. But I can fix that. There we go. This will help me survive in the future. We'll see if I need them during this fight. I'd, of course, prefer to use them during the final chapter stuff, which... Not really sure what we're getting into, but I assume boss fights. And this, of course, is a really a tough heal. It gives me 200 bonus health points, which is a lot, because I only have 4k total. And then, uh, 9999 heal. Let's see if Morgan can feed me anything, because anything he can make would heal me. And I'd like to, I'd like to use the, uh... I'd like to heal by getting experience if I can, instead of using, uh, heals. Welcome to Mor- I, now then! Welcome to Mori's Touring- Touring Restaurant. That's 1700. That's a lot. That would probably heal me. Only half health, actually. Bummer. Yeah, we'll do it. Fruit and nut strudel. I even have the specific withered <laughs> ingredients for this stuff now. Things have gotten weird. Boom. Oh, it was a multiple bite food, so it made me heal for full anyway. Weird that it says recover 2,000 hit points, but actually gives me more than that. It's a weird way of contextualizing that. That's fine, though. Now it's worth uh, 14,000. This is worth more than that now. So we'll do a floating island next. Wow. We're actually going to be on our way to, to level 40, level 54 before we're starting this fight. <laughs> Makes sense, though. Campaigns keep getting harder. She has the hardest campaign, so it helps to make her the highest level character. Ah! Uh, yeah, we made it. Level 54. <laughs> this, this, ingre this is constantly taunting me. It's... It's always the last thing left because it's the only ingredient and it's the only recipe in the entire thing that is just like one ingredient. It's just that one fruit. But it's also the crappiest recipe in the entire game, I think. Thank you very Alright, Mori. It was nice knowing you. I'm going to go die now. Goodbye. Come and get it. Oops. Little mul mulberry seed right there. Alright. Cool. Let's do this. Story time! This disturbance, is this your doinging way? I take it you can see through my disguise. None of my soldiers mask themselves. Twas a mistake, but... I didn't think this could be finished without using my trump card. Trump card? Ingwe! Velvet, tis you! Ingwe, please don't use that power! Ingwe, please! Why did you follow me? It was a mistake to let you keep that cipher. Now is the time to let you in on a secret. Velvet. It was me. I destroyed Valentine. What? Back then, if I hadn't known that this man was our father, if I didn't know his battle plans and know that he didn't stand a chance, I wouldn't have made the cauldron run amok. No, you... I didn't think it would cause such destruction. You were protected by the cipher and escaped the curse and disaster. 
And I was saved because I was hiding in the cauldron's shadow. I watched the kingdom fall into ruin before my very eyes. And I was spared, as you had intended. You talk as if you understand me. In order to save my father, I destroyed an entire kingdom. Can you imagine the pain I feel? I still remember what you said when you looked down at me. You did well, traitor. Now the cauldron is mine. There were other soldiers nearby. I could not call you my son. You don't remember, do you? You didn't care at all. Your eyes and heart were full of greed for the cauldron. No. Is that why you gave the ring to Elfaria? I'd rather the fairies have it than give it to you. That must hurt the Aesir. You... I will pay for my sins with my life. I shall be cursed, and I will die. If I am the only one who is to suffer my mother's curse, then so be it. Stop it, Ingwe! But I will take you and the cauldron to my grave with me. Try using your magic. If you think you can surpass the power of Darkova, Holy shit, how's that for a transformation? The Beast of Darkova. Oh my god, it's huge. It's way bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, it looked pretty big. <laughs> but it's even bigger. -er -er. That, what the fuck? That, <laughs> that's so cool looking. That animation's amazing. It has all those nasty tongues waving around and everything. This is so freaky looking. Okay, that looks dangerous. Let's go over here for a second. What you doing? Oh! It's making fire. That's animated so coolly, although it barely moves because it's such a weird, giant, awkwardly animated, giant, monster, weirdo thing. Oh, that's too high. Yeah, I don't know if it hits really hard or something, but so far not very threatening because it doesn't attack very aggressively. But damn, it's not a cool boss design. The tongues look a little silly, admittedly. He, like, waggles them around so rapidly that it looks strange. I'm just floating in the air constantly. Just unleashing this endless combo. <laughs> she really can just hang in the air for so long for a character who doesn't have an, uh, the ability to fly like some people. You should have done a fire thing over here, yep. Alright, you having fun over there? <laughs> wow. Okay, this is a little bit of a disappointment. <laughs> With how much work I obviously went into animating this guy, so far he's not really doing much. I don't know if he has a ridiculous final phase or something. Because that, that little fireball thing was new. Ow, whoa. Okay, that caught me by surprise. Although admittedly it feels like the game's cheating a little bit. It caught me by su- ow, crap. It caught me by surprise primarily because the game normally has a mini-map in the corner that tells me when projectiles are coming, and they decide that it's gone now. I don't know if it's been gone during every boss fight at the end of campaigns or not. I think- I don't think it was. No, I remember seeing that mini-map during the- I remember using it to navigate around attacks from the Netherworld Queen. So that means that it's, uh, definitely been removed for this specific fight. Probably because I thought it would interfere with us being able to see the giant freaking Cerberus monster, which looks amazing. Aside from the flat, the flippity flappity tongues, which I, which I already said, but yeah, it, they look, they look, they look a little silly. What the? What the fuck? I didn't see him jump. I literally, he just disappeared, <laughs> like a Dragon Ball Z dash. There, wow, his head's disappeared. His his head's actually disappeared in the background when he does that. That's cool. Yeah, you could, you could delete his tongues. In fact, every time he jumps, his tongues disappear again. And it would, he, he would look more normal that way. 
honestly. Look at those giant ears. They're like owl ears, the way they stick up so high. Alright, final health bar. Ah, uh, not enough photons for my for do, to do another a finisher again. Oh, he's doing a fire thing over there. I probably don't want to go down very much right now. Yep, that's exactly what I thought. Oh, what the... What is that? Where is it even coming from? <laughs> oh, what the... What? Oh, come on. Game, you're breaking your own rules a little bit right now. There's supposed to be a map that tells me when any, when attacks are coming. And that's not just a, that's not the helpful handicap. That's like kind of an important mechanic because it's the only way to tell what's going on because it's, it's a giant map and a tiny screen. Oh, he's dead already. Weird. Cool fight, but easy. The transformation aborted. I couldn't finish the spell. Don't interfere, Velvet. Mother wished for my death. No! Listen to me, Ingwe! Don't worry about me. Go escape now! Back then, we were scared. Scared that our grandfather would kill us. So we swore in front of him. Swore that we didn't love our mother when she was standing right there. She was crying then. But she didn't cry from the pain. She was happy that we chose the path of life instead of death at his hands. She knew that she could not escape death. If we sided with her, we would have been killed also. That's not true. We had forsaken her. We didn't lift a finger to save her. That's why she cursed us before she died. Grandfather was hiding this. It's the second part of the memo she wrote to us. She writes of her love for both of us. That, that can't be true. I... I abandoned her. You're safe, Your Majesty. There they are! Kill them before they do more harm! Wait, those two are... What? It looks like this is the end for us, Ingwe. <clears throat> Over here! Hurry! Prince Cornelius. You must be wondering about Ingwe. He left his bed, and we haven't found him. But I'm certain he will appear again. Have you seen my father? He's badly injured, but he's run off. Master Croy? Oh, Princess Velvet, I finally have the answer. I, I, I have to tell you. Master, please rest. No, this is important. Listen to me. As the sorcerer said, the epic poems detail the path leading to the world's end. But it's not the path to becoming king. That path has been seen in our country's prophecies. This is the path that must be avoided. Master! Even if this interpretation is correct, the, the outcome is horrible. Two humans survive the end of the world. Princess Velvet, only two will be... 
spared. Father! Master Cry. This scroll has the details. Please use the utmost care and try to avert the Armageddon. Perhaps that is your duty and your destiny. A slightly odd word choice. Like, make the. do the right thing to save the world. I don't know. Perhaps it's your destiny, maybe. <laughs> Wise man's analysis. To drive back the invading Valentinian forces, King Galen used the mystic power of Titania to turn into the three headed demon beast. In other words, the six eyed beast of the prophecy. Just as we thought, King Galen is the guiding hand of salvation. The Lord of the Netherworld in the saga is Queen Odette. The Looming Blaze is the Inferno King Onyx. The King of Titania releases its, his mystic power, empowers the other nations, and seizes the cauldron. The Netherworld and the Fire Kingdom will join the war, and the three dragons will eradicate all, bringing the end to us. But fear not, the world will be saved in the end by the arrival of a new king and his promised guidance. The original manuscript written by the three wise men has been lost to time. It bears mentioning that this their theory is merely conjecture based on prophecy. Oh, great. <laughs> At least it's concrete. <laughs> oh, Croy's memo. So this, is the, this must be the important part. Saga Psalm 2, a fiery six-eyed beast speeds the guiding hand of salvation. The one who removes the torment is mine own son. Who wrote this again, though? Let's see. That's, is that a clue? Fiery six-eyed beast speeds the guiding hand of salvation. The one who removes the torment is my own son. I wonder if that means that I need to go after some fiery beast with somebody's son. Whose perspective is this? It's Croy. Croy. Okay. Six-Eyed Beast must be Darkova, this three-headed demon beast. The section is based on the prophecy by a great king of Titania. Therefore, the one who removes the torment is mine own son is uh, thought to refer to the blood of Titanian royal family. And if the beast feeds on man, and most likely no human can defeat it. But it's unthinkable that a non-human would be king of Titania. Unless, of course, he is cursed, as we are, and is no longer human. Okay. So I'm going to have to fight against Darkova again, and I need to use, not Oswald, Cornelius. Cornelius, that's the guy's name. The other guy's name, the one that's the, the part of Titania. Alright, Saga Psalm 3. One that threatens the darkness is the shadow of the lost master. The Unleashed uh, Prophecy, verse 2, phrase 1. The Unleashed Frenzy of Death. I'm just going to stop reading that part. I'm just going to read the purple and skip the, the location of it. Alright. One that threatens the darkness is the shadow of the lost master, the unleashed frenzy of death. That's probably Oswald, right? Something seems odd about these phrases. Odette, queen of the dead, has no master to unleash her. If the lord of netherworld is not Odette, then what being can emerge from the netherworld? Only King Galen, who is claimed in the netherworld, comes to mind. Will he lead the army of the dead to his own country? Having read the Psalms based on this theory, the late master is Odette, and the shadow that threatens King Galen is the shadow of Odette? I've heard there is a swordsman who bears the shadow of death in the fairy kingdom. Could that be? Yeah, that's Oswald then. Alright. The looming blaze cometh, burning down the forest. The flood of the fire that man cannot withstand is halted by the world tree that vanished. Call it Yggdrasil, damn it! It's Yggdrasil, it's a cool word. <laughs> Alright, looming, looming blaze cometh, burning down the forest, the... The flood of fire that the man cannot withstand is halted by the world tree and vanishes. Evidently, King Onyx's army from the Fire Kingdom will sweep the land at Armageddon. The saga states that mankind cannot resist, but the world tree destroys the army. Yet, the, this world tree exists only in myth. There is no such tree in, the, in this world. The second clue? Scorches the thorns... Sc uh, scorches the throne's surroundings. Does that mean that the throne itself is not does not get scorched if so it could be suggested suggesting that the one that the one on the throne is able to face the flames 
Um, King Onyx's army from the Fire Kingdom will sweep the land of Armageddon. There's a blaze coming down on the forest. World Tree vanishes. The best I can think of is that because it's a forest, maybe Mercedes, but this one's a little iffy. No, yeah, so there's going to be a fire attack happening, and you, the one on the throne is able to face the, the flames. The only character we can play as that is currently a queen is uh, Mercedes, and it's in the forest, which kind of fits, too, in the world tree and everything, because um, Gwendolyn is Odin's daughter, Oswald is no one, kind of. Well, he's not no one, but he's not a sitting king. Uh, Cornelius is prince. Velvet's also... On her, on her own. So yeah, the only person on the throne right now is Mercedes. So she'll fight the fire. Uh, the cauldron is, of course, THE cauldron. When the princess's efforts are in vain, the nightmare repeats and Armageddon will begin. Our king must be the one who triggers it. Okay. Through blades and arrows... Uh, though blades and arrows are unleashed, the flooding fire cannot be stopped. It can only be chained. If any weapon can match the raw power of the cauldron, it would be some matter of cipher. Uh, and not a blade, but something that can chain it. So to fight, so the one that so the cauldron has to be fought by Velvet because she has a chain weapon. In the cauldron that breathes despair, the blood of the ancients boils. We are newcomers to this land, so we are not of the ancient blood. The one who controls the cauldron must be a Va Valentinian and must hold a cipher made of chains. In other words, there must be, it must be Princess Velvet. Wow. Just add a whole extra page to make it extra obvious after I figured it out already. Just say it explicitly. Uh, if the baby dragon master, Cornelius, saw, saw is, Le uh, is Leventhin, as the king said, then it would be in eternity before it mat matures and devours the world. Also, this has to be the only character left, assuming this is the next person, would have to be Gwendolyn. There's nobody left. Uh, it is written that the dragon's growth is slow yet inevitable. Born in chaos and fire, sleep in mother's arms. What is the mother that puts the Lord of Sinks to sleep? Uh, with, the dra with the dragons Hindle, Wagner, and Bilal gone, it seems unlikely that the mother is a dragon. Then what is the mother in the Psalms? Devours the Stone of Blood. The Stone of Blood can be taken to mean the red magic stones created in the cauldron. Even if Leventhin is stopped by a red stone, the Armageddon will not stop. The Demon Lord must have made Baylor in anticipation of this. Was this not even a, a clue to a character or something? And lead the revival. The last psalm explicitly states the world will be revived. The Demon Lord and the Magi have taken this to mean that whoever survives Armageddon will begin, become new kings of the world. The Demon Lord sought victory through wars and may just try to control Armageddon directly, yet they are mistaken. The two lords that survive will be chosen from the five challengers of the disasters. Now we're talking about five challengers. It's pretty straightforward for game structure, at least, because we have five campaigns. The two lords are said to be crownless. I suspect lord is not meant to suggest royalty, but something else. Finally, here is the conclusion and my findings. This is conjecture, but from life disappears from the land, all comes to an end. One can only imagine a barren world with a tiny population. By crownless lords... Could this mean that the... Wow, that's not a word I've really seen before. Uh, primogenitors of the mankind... Of mankind... Uh, crownless lords, could this mean the prim, primogenitors of mankind the new world? If so, it will be... It will by necessity... Uh, but it, will be, it will by necessity have to be two humans, a man and a woman. Then we can presume that the mother is in Psalm 5 can be understood as the one who defeats Leventh and becomes the new mother of the new world. Everyone other than the two humans will perish. How can this in any way be considered salvation? I hope that I have misunderstood the prophecies. Huh. Not exactly encouraging to talk about everybody dying except for two people. And who would that be? They're crownless. They're male and female. It almost seems like it might be because of the setup of the story in particular. Maybe it would be Oswald and Gwendolyn. That'd be a bummer. Uh, those those are like the two least those are the two characters I like the least out of all the characters probably. <laughs> can it just be can it just be Cornelius and Velvet? They're kind of they're kind of neat. <laughs> oh, 
three post-mission acquisitions. Crossbind. I'll have to check everyone's trees, which will admittedly be a little confusing because I they're laid out non-linearly as a series of weird shapes and everything. And I haven't dealt with four of the characters in a while, but each of them unlocked something at the end of their campaign I've never had a chance to use yet, because I haven't been them yet. Release a chain over a vast area to chase and restrict an, uh, nearby foes. Um, it honestly kind of sounds like a redundant version of that first skill I had that would shoot a chain out that would chase people and hit them. Although I guess restricting implies a different effect on top of that. Alright, that's all five campaigns done. Shared item box. The item box is now shared among all characters. You can switch to different boxes by pressing triangle. That's interesting.